I'm a brilliant intellectual. As am I. The two of us are sick of dealing with troglodytes, and so we moved into a bomb shelter so we wouldn't catch the stupid. Now we pass our intelligence on by debunking YouTube videos. We are the, the debunkers. debunkers. According to the internet, Winston Churchill once said, History will be kind to me. I know this because I intend to write it. Now, I'm not sure that he should have been so confident about how history would work because it turns out that he never actually said that. But he did say something very similar to it, which makes it more accurate than most quotes on the internet. You know, and to be honest, I guess there's just something very powerful about having a person having some italicized text next to their face. But the point about history being written by the winners is true. Exactly! Like how through the course of this video, progressives controlling institutionalized education and entertainment media is going to result in you rewriting the present! I mean, just, just look at the American Revolution. America won that war. So history teaches it as a fight for freedom against the tyranny of England. But best believe, if England had won the war, well, history would be about how they put down a riot by a bunch of cheating thugs. These domestic terrorists threw our tea into Boston Harbor while dressed as Native Americans, which aside from being criminal, is very problematic. And if history is taught by the winners, nobody in America is winning more than white people. Ah, uh, yes, that's why you're not allowed to criticize white people, but are allowed to criticize every other racial group. Which is why so much of what's in schools has been from their point of view. African-American history is not taught adequately. What we learn essentially is a whitewashed history. Studies have found less than 10% of class time is devoted to black history. And what percent of that time is devoted to Asian history? Or Irish history? Or Native American history? Do they have a special time set aside where we're required to focus on them? Or do we only learn about them when they come up organically in the study of history? Seriously, does he not realize what an unbelievable statement of privilege it is for 9% of lesson time being dedicated specifically towards your ethnicity is? Considering the US is a white majority country rooted in European culture, 9% could be argued to be disproportionately high. Not only that, but this 9% number comes from the time dedicated specifically to the category of black history. It's not as if the rest of the time they aren't learning about black history when other topics are brought up. It's not like black historic figures don't come up in other categories. Only 8% of seniors can identify slavery as a central cause of the Civil War. Ye mean the war in northern aggression? This is a deceptive claim. Explain. The source comes from a report published by the SBLC. Say no more. But I must. The question asked in the survey was as follows. Which was the reason the South seceded from the Union? A. To preserve states' rights. B. To preserve slavery. C. To protest taxes on imported goods. D. To avoid rapid industrialization. E. Not sure. Where the deception comes in is that the SBLC reported that only 8% of people could identify slavery as a cause of the Civil War. But the question asks those surveyed to identify the cause of the Civil War. In reality, a person could identify all four answers as causal factors, but the survey only lets you select one. But the way it's being reported on here, it sounds like people were able to identify multiple factors but didn't consider slavery to be one of them. We should also mention this survey comes from the SPLC's Teaching Tolerance Project, which has been rebranded as Learning for Justice, which presupposes the far-left position that America is a white supremacist country. So it's no surprise that their survey is tailored deceptively in order to confirm that it is one. There is no national standard for what history is taught. Each state sets standards which outlines what students are expected to learn. You say that like it's a bad thing. And yet, in the piece that accompanies this video report, they unknowingly contradict themselves. In that article, CBS cites a study to show how the field of social studies, and therefore the time given to black history, is being marginalized. The study itself says this is due to national standardization. Seven states do not directly mention slavery, and eight do not mention the civil rights movement. Only two states mention white supremacy. Most standards don't include names like George Washington or French Revolution either. So I guess kids aren't learning about either of those? George Hoington? 
The what revolution? Also, notice the words state standards flash on the screen for a moment, but aren't in the voiceover. This frames the issue such that it seems seven states don't mention slavery in the classroom. However, this only means the word slavery isn't mentioned in the state's curriculum standards. Not that it isn't covered. Yes, the Delaware history standards for grades K through 12 does not use the word slavery in its standards. Yet are we to believe that this Democratic-run state doesn't talk about slavery when that's like the Democrats' favorite thing to talk about ever? Hey, hey, guys. Rick, we're, we're busy. Do you guys want to talk about slavery? What's about slavery, guys? <sighs> you always do this. Julie, really, because of slavery, intergenerational wealth is- <gasps> In fact, in CBS's written piece, they even state that slavery and civil rights not being addressed by name in the curriculum doesn't mean they aren't being taught about. The kids learn that slavery was bad, but we ended it. Whoa, you mean they're taught what actually happened? Wow. Some stuff happened, but Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks kind of fixed that. And now look, Barack Obama, we had a black president. Racism is over. We're done. A citation might be nice here. Yeah. It's pretty crazy that most students in America are only taught about a handful of important black Americans. I'm sorry that history books aren't cast like Netflix reboots, Trevor, but it actually isn't that bizarre that a country which has historically been majority white with its roots in Europe would mostly have white historic figures. First and foremost, for the vast majority of Western history, there was virtually no contact with black people at all. So black people aren't just a minority in Western culture by raw population numbers, they've also been in our history for a minority of its length. Of course there are fewer black figures of historic importance in a civilization where there are fewer black people, period. You would think from this context to avoid bellowing that there were an equal number of black and white historic figures of equal importance in Western history, and that we were simply choosing to ignore the black ones because we're mean. Hello, class. Today we're going to learn about every white person who ever lived. But then we won't have time to learn about Harriet Tubman or Frederick Douglass. Who? <laughs> because can you imagine if it were the other way around? Welcome everybody to White History 101. Trevor, it would never be the other way around. Because in countries where white people are a minority, they aren't given their own special category in history so that they feel included. Nonsense. Don't you think China has a White History Month? Basically, America treats history the way most people treat their browser history. Just delete all the embarrassing stuff and hope no one notices. Kind of like the history of the progressive movement and how it gave birth to eugenics. Or the history of the sexual revolution and how it was sparked by pedophile apologist Alfred Kinsey who aided and abetted child abusers. Or the history of the term gender identity which was coined by a pedophile who gave a baby a sex change and then sexually abused that child and his brother repeatedly. Do you want schools to teach that history, Trevor? Or just the stuff about how white people should feel real bad and let the progressives whose ideology was molded by the aforementioned individuals come to our rescue? But the good news is that as society changes, they re-examine their pasts and ask themselves, should we keep telling ourselves what we wish happened? Or start telling people what you wish happened? Or should we understand what actually happened? Called it! And that's what's happening in American schools right now. Bet. They're asking their school administrators to incorporate anti-racist education into their curriculum. Oh, wow, well, anti-racist is a nice-sounding term, so I'm sure anyone who uses it is exclusively trying to do good things. Sorry, but unfortunately, that's not the case. What? As Robin D'Angelo once said, the question is not, did racism take place, but rather, how did racism manifest in this situation? In other words, it's not a straw man argument to say that these ideologues see literally everything as racist. If a white customer and black customer enter a store and the white sales assistant approaches the white customer, that's racist because she's putting whitey's needs before the black man. If she approaches the black customer first, it's a sign she distrusts black people and won't let them browse unsupervised. The shop assistant's perception of her own motives is irrelevant. Her job is to admit she was somehow racist and do better. In other words, the shop assistant shouldn't tell herself what actually happened. She should tell herself what progressives wish had happened. To have books written by a person of color and their life struggles are required part of the curriculum. Ah, you know what they say, always judge a book by its author's cover. 
For the record, the petition in question states, While math, science, history, and English are all considered integral academic pursuits, so is learning to be anti-racist. We all live in America, and it's undeniable that this country was built upon the foundations of slavery, followed closely by sharecropping, then segregation, then the war on drugs, and the list goes on and on. Sounds a little more loaded than asking for diversified reading, but why should we be surprised by the usual CRT Martin Bally? They view literature not as an exploration of great writing and time-proven insights into human nature, but as a vehicle for promoting race-based grievance sessions. But we shouldn't be shocked, because they see education in general, entertainment media, political discourse, friendship, romance, religion, and every other human pursuit, worthwhile or otherwise, as a vehicle for promoting race-based grievance sessions. North Carolina, a committee of social studies educators proposed that the term systemic racism systemic included in the state's curriculum standard. California State Board of Education has created the nation's first statewide model for ethnic studies curriculum at the high school level. Education officials say that kids do need to learn about discrimination and oppression that textbooks often overlook. A lot of times in school you don't see a big representation of black history. I see comments all the time saying I learn more on TikTok than I do for my own school. Yeah, that's how much education is lacking in America. Kids are going to TikTok to learn. Oh no, someone on TikTok told me some made up radical left-wing CRT garbage that no teacher ever thought to express. Our public schools must be failing. I mean, they are, but that's not why. Yep, gotta love people complaining about America's failure of an education system at the same time as they're trying to strip classical literature out of the curriculum in place of modern race Marxist nonsense. Yeah, I'm sure they care a lot about education. Kids are going to TikTok to learn, which is insane. Unlike going to Comedy Central to learn. Or a public school. Social media isn't supposed to be a school. It's supposed to be where you post stuff that gets you suspended from school. And I'm not saying you can't learn about history on TikTok. But you should be careful about what you're hearing because it could be complete BS and so responding by saying, I learned this on TikTok but not in school isn't exactly an indictment of your school. And in the same way as American schools are starting to change what they teach about America's history with racism, it's causing a strong reaction from people who aren't comfortable with what their kids are learning. Can you imagine being uncomfortable with your child being taught they're part of an oppressive collective and that their actions must be analyzed through the framework of clumsily disguised Maoism rather than taking them into account as an individual human being? Must be racist. There's growing backlash tonight against what critics call the indoctrination of public school students in an anti-white curriculum. It has to do with the teaching of what is called critical race theory. Critical race theory teaches people and our children to judge one another not based on the content of their character, but solely on the color of their skin. Absolutely based. One of the main tenets of CRT is that colorblindness is ineffective and should be disavowed. Critical race theorists denounce racial integration. In a critique of Our Constitution is Colorblind by Neil Gotanda, racial integration is called a cultural genocide. This verbatim phrase is immediately followed by, in short, assimilation as a societal goal has grave potential consequences for blacks and other non-whites. However utopian it appears, the colorblind assimilation program implies the hegemony of white culture. It would have our children growing up hating this country and hating one another. It teaches more or less that America is inherently racist, stating more or less that, that if you're born white, you are necessarily racist. Essentially, Mace. every white person should apologize for being white and what happened to plus years ago. We are tired of the continual drumbeat of our educational system as used the program of our kids to, to program our kids into thinking that America is a country of hate and division. Why is he showing us so many clips of people saying correct things? Just because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist. It actually means the opposite. Bravo. As evidenced by the fact that this racist is about to mock you for racist reasons. Tearing up is like a white woman's go-to move for getting out of any sticky situation. Wow, he really didn't even try to hide it. Well, if it got me out of a speeding ticket, let's see if it works on a historical reckoning. Mm. I thought we were good at debunking things, but then Trevor Noah played a bunch of clips of people expressly refuting his position and he responded by making fun of a white woman for crying. Debunked! Look, I get why these parents are upset. Because the kind of person who makes racist remarks about white women crying is thrilled with their child's curriculum? 
I mean, they don't want their children learning that white people are inherently racist. Hi, here comes the part where he dismisses the fact that this is literally what's actually happening without offering any real explanation. But that's not necessarily what teaching about racism does. No, it's what teaching CRT does, though. Nice sleight of hand. For example, a big reason why American neighborhoods are segregated today is because historically, the government made it almost impossible for black people who tried to move into white neighborhoods. It was called redlining, and it was a societal structure that still has racist effects. Even if no white people in those neighborhoods now are personally bigots. The effects that redlining has on the black community today is a massive and very complicated conversation. But setting aside whatever conclusions we can draw from the information, discussing redlining as a historic fact isn't something anyone is telling schools not to do. But you know what you and I are being told to discuss? What's that? A quick word from our sponsor. Look at you, wanting to be a critical thinker like us while you're completely manipulated by algorithms and clickbait nonsense. Idiot. We didn't get to become wealthy and brilliant intellectuals by falling prey to such follies. We did it by violating insider trading laws. And that may not be legal, but for now, fact-checking the news media still is. And that's why you need... Ground News! Ground News is the world's first news comparison platform. It allows you to sort through different news stories and see how the left is reporting on things as opposed to the right. It also makes you taller! Ground News will not make you taller. You can find out who's funding the stuff that you're reading, how often they usually get the facts right, what their biases are. So you can debunk them, of course. There's a fantastic blind spot feature which lets you know which stories either side of the aisle isn't reporting on. You can use it to read stories the left is ignoring so you can know what the President of the United States is up to. You'll never be as brilliant as we are, but it's a start. To try Ground News for free! Or subscribe to get access to all the features you see here and support a small team of independent media outsiders working to make the news more transparent. Go to ground.news slash freedom tunes or click the link in the description. T-O-O-N-S. It's not like musical tunes. I don't know where you people got that. It's animation, not music. Now back to the show. You can look at your history critically without believing that you are personally to blame for it. And a good example of this is Germany, right? They teach the Holocaust in the schools. So do we, and we also teach about slavery, Jim Crow, and segregation. But what does any of this have to do with CRT? But little Klaus isn't walking home from class like, Oh, Mama, Mama, ich bin ein Nazi. They said that I was Hitler and I did the same thing as him even though I'm five years old. Well, I'm no expert on German education, but if that's the case, it's probably because Klaus is actually being taught the history of the Holocaust and not critical Reich theory. No, that doesn't happen because Germans understand that we learn from history. Then why did they start two world wars? Not to wallow in it. Yeah, so let's do that instead of CRT. But you see, what's happening right now is that in America, some people don't understand that. And their hysteria is spilling into actual laws. Several states, including Florida, Idaho, and Iowa, have worked to ban the 1619 Project in critical race theory. Wait, his example of real history being blocked from public schools is that the 1619 Project, which posits that America was founded in 1619 over slavery, a blatant ahistoric claim, is being blocked in some areas? He can't find an example of something that's true? being barred from public schools? This isn't a matter of taste or opinion. The 1619 Project is blatantly untruthful. Want to see how the sausage that is manufactured consent gets made? While creating the 1619 Project, the New York Times reached out to historian of African-American life and slavery, Leslie M. Harris, for a fact check. But all of the critiques were blatantly ignored. And 1619 Project author Nicole Hannah-Jones has defended her work by claiming History is not objective, unquote. In other words, she's writing fan fiction, not history, which is entirely reasonable to ban from schools. Not really a strong example for your case. And the other pillar of your argument? The banning of CRT, which asserts that colorblindness must be rejected and that people should be treated differently on the basis of their race. And you see these two very specific and dubious concepts being excluded from public schools as meaning we aren't allowed to teach about racism and then call us hysterical? 
on their core education plans. Arkansas became the latest state where state agencies are barred from teaching any concept that the United States is an inherently racist nation. Okay, I love how she clearly really wanted to say that these agencies can't teach any concept of racism, but that's blatantly untrue, so she has to concoct this unbelievably clumsily worded sentence can't teach any concept that America is an inherently racist nation. In Louisiana, a Republican lawmaker is now under fire for comments he made on the House floor when proposing the theory's elimination from academic curriculum. If you're having a discussion on whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly. The there's, whole. there's no good to slavery, though. Well, then whatever whatever the case may be you're right you're right that, I, I didn't mean to imply that <laughs> ah this random guy misspeaking the strongest argument for crt wow guys wow it's almost like this guy wasn't properly taught about america's history with racism it's almost like you're making insane assumptions based on the misuse of a very common idiomatic expression although i am glad that he recognized how wrong he was you know but part of me does wish that he had just kept on digging in oh really you think that no good came from slavery? What, I'm the only one who likes the blues? None of you like the blues? Who's the real racist now, hmm? Still me? I guess it is still me. Of course you wish that, because you, along with every other race-obsessed left-winger, believe every verbal error is a Freudian slip, which reveals the deep, dark racism within. And you know what's really weird about this whole thing? Is how the same people who freak out about cancel culture don't want their children being taught blatantly racist and untrue theories in school? How is that weird? What does it make sense about that to you? Urgh. The typical tired left-wing argument. You don't think ordinary people should have their lives destroyed for tweets they made 12 years ago, but you are against something else that someone did? How interesting. Now I want to use the power of the government to stop bad ideas from getting into schools. Would love to hear your take on creationism being banned from public schools. But I guess the solution is, if anyone really wants to get anti-racism education in schools, well, they should put the curriculum in Mr. Potato Head's ass, and that way, conservatives will defend that to the death. What? Mr. Potato Head removed Mr. in an act of empty virtue signaling so they could be considered more gender neutral and gender affirming or something, I guess. So, conservatives... Like potato genitalia or something? I, I don't get it. Now look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that systemic racism is behind all of America's problems. You're just saying it's okay to teach kids that it is. In my opinion, I think a lot more laws are written to protect the upper class from the lower classes. Baby's first introduction to politics, yes. I mean, that's why a lot of laws that screw over black people also screw over poor white people. It's almost like they're made to screw over poor people and not black people or something. A lot of counties in America pull poor people over and ticket them for random things like tail lights or whatever they want to just to meet their quotas. But what they won't do is do that kind of thing on Wall Street, right? They don't pull people over who have access to lawyers or access to power. No one's frisking down the guys from Wall Street to check if they have cocaine. True, based credit where it's due and all. They wanna go after poor people. So you're admitting it's an economic issue disguised as a racial issue. And it just so happens that the easiest way to find poor people in America is to look at the color of their skin. Because if they're black, the chances are higher that they're poor. Or look at how it's illegal to jump turnstiles in New York. I mean, that's targeted towards poor people, but it affects black people more because white men can't jump. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. And I don't mean like this white lady cried funny, like, you know, that joke got a chuckle out of me. And, and normally it wouldn't bother me, right? Because I don't care, but... You're not exactly going to win white people over into believing you care a lot about racism when all of the racist jokes in the video have been directed towards us. Tell a joke about black people, you coward! But look, that's just me. The bigger issue that is being brought up with this controversy is... Is the fact that you say controversy instead of controversy? The point of teaching history. Like, what is the actual point? I believe it's to teach people what happened in the past. And you believe it's to ensure minorities feel satisfied with the amount of racial representation they've received. Is it to make kids feel good that they live in a perfect country with no problems? No, it's to make white kids feel as though they're guilty members of an oppressive class. Or is it to give them an unsparing assessment of how society got where it is? 
Yes, an unsparing assessment which spares certain details in order to ensure we're able to meet our quota for the amount of time you think we need to spend talking about black history. We ...have the tools to change it in a better direction. Eh, nope. Wrong. If you're trying to teach history in a manner that will inspire people to want to effect political change in the way you see fit, you've already failed at giving the kind of unsparing assessment of history you claim to want to impart. You're a propagandist, not an educator. You're pro-propaganda, not pro-education. And I say it should be the latter. You quite literally don't if you want to teach the 1619 Project. Otherwise, as a wise person once said, those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. This is exactly why we should be teaching our children about Mao's Cultural Revolution, where he had the population separate themselves into distinct categories on an oppressive hierarchy scale which he himself invented. Workers, poor people, revolutionary soldiers, and revolutionary martyrs were viewed as being above others because of their struggle, and counter-revolutionaries, landlords, rich farmers, bad influencers, and right-wingers were all considered to be below others because of their unearned privilege or failure to support the far-left causes of the day. Oh, come on. It's not like we're at any risk of repeating that. 